I'm having fun. You're a very good uh, co-host. <laughs> Hi, my name is Felicia. And my name is Giancarlo. And this is our review of Amerigo. You know, you know what you know what that is, right? America, you know, you know what Amerigo Vespucci is, right? Yeah, of course. Who yeah, doesn't know him? Oh boy. He was in the he? last se season of The Simpsons. I right? knew it. <laughs> <laughs> No, he was in Scooby-Doo. Yes, on. you were close. Scooby-Doo it is. Okay, so what is he? He's a real guy as well. It's a true story too. Yeah, of course. America. No, are you serious? You don't know him. You know who America is. I honestly... America. He's, uh, he was the um, explorer that um, started settling um, America. That's why America is called after him. America. Oh, America okay, Vespucci. So after... He's in Italian. He's okay. one of us. He's one of us. He's one of us. Represent. Um, so after Christopher Columbus was Amerigo. That's correct. Hence, La America. Si, Signora. In Amerigo, players will navigate and discover new lands to settle in, rich in valuable resources. In the box, you'll find these components to set up. 16 island tiles, which you'll place in the grid depending on the number of players you are. 8 frames to be placed around the island tile. Four time markers, which you'll place in descending order on its space. Five treasure chests, which you'll place on islands with 20 or more land spaces on them. 40 commodity tokens for five different types, cotton, tobacco, cinnamon, coconut, and coffee. Place one of each type on their matching icons on the board. 37 neutral landscape tiles and a planning token, which you'll place near the board. A storage board in which you'll place five out of the six pirate counters face down, revealing one of them at random. 26 progress token, which you'll place six face up on the storage board and keeping the rest next to it in a draw pile. 50 production tokens, which you'll place all of them in a stack in a four player game next to the storage board, reveal enough to fill the spaces on it. Four player sheets, one for each player, which you'll place in front of him. Players will choose a color and grab the matching components, which are 16 village tiles, 12 trading posts, two victory point tiles, and five scoring discs, which you'll place one at the beginning of each track on his player sheet. Randomly place a disc of each player one at a time on the special action track on the storage board. The second one is the second player. Move his disc on his gold track up one. Third player will move it up two, and last player will move it up three. Place the cube tower next to the storage board and drop in all 49 cubes in it, seven in each of the seven colors. Place any cubes that land in the tray on the appropriately colored space on the action circuit. You're now ready to explore, settle, and earn your fame and riches. The player with the most victory points at the end game wins. Amerigo is played over five rounds. Each round consists of seven phases and in the order denoted on the action circuit. Move ships, load cannons, plan, progress, build, buy production tokens, and lastly, special action. During the first phase, the first player will drop all the blue cubes in the cube tower. All cubes that come out are placed in this central space of the action circuit. The colored cubes will determine which actions are available for this phase, and the largest amount of single colored cubes will determine the amount of action points or APs that can be spent on one of the available actions. For example, here are four black cubes to load the cannons, one blue cube to move ships, and one white cube for special action. So you can use four APs to load cannon or to move ships or for special action. Now starting with the first player, the disc furthest on the special action track and working your way back. Each player will choose their one action for that phase. The cubes remain on the central space until all players acted, so players can end up choosing the same actions. Players may also opt to gain gold instead of doing an action for that phase. To do so, simply tally up all the cubes and divide by 3. Round that number up and the player will move his disc up that many spaces on his gold track. For every gold total he goes in excess of 12, he will immediately move that many spaces on the victory track. Once every player has acted, place the cubes back in their perspective pile and move on to the next phase on the wheel. Check to see who is the first player on the special action track and repeat the process. Let's look at these actions in depth. The first time a player will use the blue cubes for the move ships action, he will place his two ships on any space of his choice on the frame. Then for each AP he has, he will move that many space for each of his ships. Any number of ships can stand in a frame space, but only one ship can be in a water space on the island tiles. If a ship ends on an anchor space, that player may place one of his trading posts there if it's empty. The first player to do so on an island scores 3 victory points for his discovery. 
The black cubes used for load cannons action will make you move your disc on your cannon track a number of space equal to the APs used for it. All APs that would go over 12 on this track will get converted into 2 gold. The red cubes will be used for the plan action. The active player can use his APs to buy any number of his landscape tiles for 1 AP each. He may also take 1 and only 1 neutral landscape tiles per phase. The price of these will be listed on the back of the tiles in terms of APs. The brown cubes will be used for the progress action. The player will move his disc up his progress the number of AP spent for this action. If he ever reaches or passes a victory point space, he'll get to choose one of the progress tokens from the storage board and add it next to his player sheet. He will now have this ability. These range from having extra APs, pirate actions, plan and building actions, gold or victory point, and end game effects. Again, if any APs would go over the progress track, they will all get converted into 2 gold. Green cubes will allow you to take the build action. This action will let you place the tiles you bought with the plan action onto an island you have a trading post on. When building, you must start by building next to your trading post or continue from one of your village or neutral tile. Building on a commodity token will let you take it and place it in its appropriate space on the player sheet. You can also build over an empty trading space to cut off any other players from getting on that island. A player can build as many tiles as his AP allows. Furthermore, he'll receive a number of victory points listed on the back tile, the far left one for small islands, 19 land spaces or less, and the far right bigger one for big islands, 20 or more land spaces. Should a player fill all the land spaces of an island, he will complete it. First he'll grab the black treasure chest from big islands. He can trade this in any time for 3 gold. Next he'll score victory points. He will score 3 VPs for completion. Then depending on the number of trading posts each player owns there, they will score what is listed on the fame space, multiplied by the number of the current round you're in. So the fastest you complete an island, the more points you get. Immediately move your VP marker that many points up. Yellow cubes will make you perform the buy production token action. Simply pay the cost list on the production token and add in the appropriate space of your player sheet, stacking them if you have more than one. The white cubes are used for special action. Here a player has two available choices. He can advance his disc on the special action track so as to try and act first next phase. If he would move up and go on a space occupied by disc, he will land on top of it, taking precedence over that player. Or he can choose to take an action of the appropriate color on his space should that cube not have been available for that phase. Again, should more APs be spent when the disc is at the end of this track, they'll all get converted into two gold. Once all these phases are done, we move on to end of round. Here each player must fire off his cannons equal to the total number of pirates stated on the pirate markers. Each player must lower the cannon markers down one level for the pirates total. If he does not have enough to match the pirates, he brings his cannons to zero and suffers the total pirates in damage by lowering his victory points that much on the track. Any leftover cannons can be used in the next round, which will prepare as so. First reveal a new pirate marker. Then remove all progress tokens from the right half on the board. Side the left ones there and place 4 new ones on the left half. Remove all production tokens and refill the spaces with new ones. Remove the topmost time markers and you're now ready for a new round. At the end of the 5th round, game and triggers and players will count their VPs adding them to the track. First convert any treasure chest and progress tokens that give you gold. Every gold over 12 converts into 1 VP. Then each player will multiply the number of commodity tokens by the number of production tokens for each type of goods. Players that have end game progress tokens marked by an E will add these to their VPs. Finally, any victory space they're on or passed on the progress and special action track get added. The player with the most wins. Stefan Feld quickly became a household favorite designer here at Board to Death, and he doesn't disappoint in Amerigo. This big box comes with lots of good quality components. Not much on the artwork side for this but it does serve for a more practical nature, making icons easy to associate with their effects. Full explanation of them are in the rulebook, which is clear and concise. There is, however, a great deal of time devoted to setting up with this many components, and finding what village tiles belong to which players is a little annoying. But once the game gets going, it does play fairly well with some choice of tactics. But that choice matters more in the middle of the game than in the beginning and end. In the beginning, you'll want to move your ships as much as possible to get your trading posts up, collect commodity tokens, and build before other players. Whilst at the end, all the islands will be discovered and you'll never again use your move ship actions. 
So the game does have this linear subcurrent strategy under the guise of choices. Luck is kept to a strict minimum, based mostly on what colored cubes come out of each phase. But even then, you can plan ahead by ending your move on a color should you desperately need to do that action in coming phases. There didn't seem to be a runaway winner with our playtest as some VPs are counted at the end game with the e-progress tiles and commodity and production tokens so as to keep everybody invested in the game. Making the same type and quantities of APs available to all players give it a consistently balanced feel. Except those neutral village do score a lot of points, especially if that player gets hold of their progress, which makes them buy two neutral landscapes per phase instead of one. Minus half a point there. But there's just enough player interaction mechanics, from building a tile to cut someone off in an island, to moving your marker on top of him on the special action track to snatch the lead and playing first, or buying a good progress or very cheap production token before another player's to give it another pro point. If you like to race for area control with diverse tactics, check out Amerigo. From us, it gets 7.5 newly discovered lands out of 10.